It's messing around. It's really cool. Built-in sounds makes it even more fun to play around. And with our sounds, you can't miss. You know, with the sample case. Nobody does it better, baby. Check it out. Here's the front. Learn. Okay, we've got our pads here. We have our pads. Now, of course, you can have a sample for every pad. Now, our pads are named. We've got pad one to pad 16. Now, the middle name, which is in yellow here, corresponds to the mode. Press the mode button. We may want to do the slider function. Press the mode again, may want to do the load. Once the mode is on, it's blinking, you can press the mode you want to go to. And the last is the number. You see a little number to the right of each pad. And you can actually use the symbols to the right of each pad. Here we have a plus sign. Over here we have a cancel. See this? A lot of number here. And there are no numbers here on pads 14 and 15 to the right top. See that? We've got a period here, an enter, 0, 9, and of course, 1, 2, 9, and 0. Next, we have our F keys. These are really cool. They're good to get you around on the software. We have a PDF that says, like, load, save. I can go to mode and say, we're going to go to effect. And the F key here would say, select. This F key here is for effect 1. F3 is for effect 2, and 4 is for master. We use the bypass, which is F6. So these keys help us to trigger certain actions in each page. I can also control the amount of record gain into our MPC. I'm recording a sample in. These are our pad bank buttons right here. A, B, C, D. So if possible, we got 16 pads, that's 4 by 4 and we've got 16, 16 more, 16, 16 more, we have possibly a 32 different sounds can be stored on each pad, which is pretty cool. That's per program. We have our full level to make sure every time you hit that sound, it's the full maximum level. Not no full level. You just tap it, and it gets louder if you hit it harder, or it gets softer when you tap on it. Got that? Pretty slick. 16 levels, of course, allows us to select, let's say, have 16 levels of a sound. Let's take that and tune that 16 levels. Press it on. Tune in. Go to 16 levels, take it off. You're good to go. We have our next sequence button. Let's let the extra sequences. We also have our track mute where each track represents a little pad. See, here's track one, bam, bam, bam. I cut them on, I cut them off. Either way, hit that pad and that sound will go off. If there's something on that pad, see, if these sounds are not recorded on, well, no need to turn them off, nothing's there at all. I press this pad, we know something's on that particular pad and that track one's got some data because it says track one, we can turn it on or off. Our data wheel is very important. Keep it clean. Don't get any dirt inside of here. Don't try to push on it too heavy. Just use it to turn to the next either frame or change numbers or numerical data, whatever you have to do. Our tap repeat button. You can see them say, okay, but I got a little track, man, and I'm gonna press main screen and I'm gonna play it. Wait, I'm gonna change that. One, two, three. Let's hold that. Yeah. See, I just changed the tempo. Or I could probably speed up too. I'll do. Yeah, I think that's a bad tempo. Or maybe this one is. See that? I can change the tempo using my tap repeat button. That's cool and funky, of course. You know our mode button. That's our main button. Get the main screen to fall back. Get somewhere you want to fall back to. Let's go back to main screen. Start over again. Window. Up and down cursors, undo button. Very important. You want to do something? You know it goes wrong. You edit it in, so let me record that. Stop it. Oh, I don't like that. 
Undo it. It's gone. Undone. Our shift button. Of course, our bars moving up by steps. Our play start. Or no, I can play from where it's at. Of course, record and overdub. All right, I'm making up some beats. This is really cool. Nice sounds. It's our rock set, kind of funky. Time to check out the back. Get your cables, get your wires. Make sure you color coordinate those wires for your output. You see, our cables are tagged and ready to go. Time to get busy. Let's get to the back. This is kind of hot, Kevin. Oh, yeah, so it's pretty fat. Okay, we have the back of our MPC 1000. Now, right here, we have our left and right record in. Let's say I've got a left and right signal coming from a CD player or a turntable. I'm going to pull up those cables right in here. Of course, you can see they're quarter inch cables. See that? We can also get our output from these two quarter inch connections. This will go to your output of your system. Let's say to your stereo system, to the mixer in or something, or into your Pro Tools rack. We also have a USB connection. See that right there? We get our USB cable. There's one other end. We want the smaller end. Take this end here. It won't fit that way. Well, how's it going to fit? Well, you see it's designed to fit only one way. As you can see right there. Next, we have individual assignable outputs. For example, I would go like, let's say one, two, three, and then four. Now, I always label my cables whenever I'm working in any kind of situation. Keep your cables labeled so you know in case the connection is bad or something, you can trace back which one it is. Four sonable outputs. We also have our digital in and out right here. It's really cool. Next, we have our MIDI section. It's our MIDI output, A and B. And we also have our MIDI in, which is one and two. Get the proper MIDI cable. Get a nice tight fit. See, that's a nice snug fit. Make sure connections are always solid and dead on. And we have our power source. Right there, we connect it right here. Make sure you have the proper wattage. Read the back and the front of your manual for that information. And our on and off button to power up our MPC 1000. Oh, ill bass sounds. Hey, we're we'll just sampling now. I got some samples in here. It's time to sample, get it busy. Nice little bass sound. Let's do that over. Okay, now it's time to sample. I'll press mode, and I'll press pad number five, which is for recording. I want to go to analog. Now, I'll turn my gain up according to how I want the gain to be, my volume up. I want to hear back a CD. I got some samples here. I want to sample one or two things. A little loops coming up right there. Move my cursor down and so set my threshold level. Threshold level's right here. That's that little, those two little boxes right there. Once it passes the threshold level, it starts to sample. I can now set the time. How many seconds I want to actually sample for. We can also, stereo. Romano. Right and left. We can also set monitor output or not. You may not even want to hear the sample. You may say it's okay, I don't want to hear the sample. You can turn your monitor off. Now it's back on. I 
I press record, and now we're sampling. I'll press stop. I want to play the sample. I'll press play. See that? I can name that sample. Turn the cursor here. I can name that sample. I'll press enter. My new sample name appears. I can press keep. I can press mode, trim, and I can trim my samples. Find the right one I want to trim. There it is. Sample. See that? I have to hold it down, of course, and you hear the whole sample play out. I can also move the cursor down, press shift, and the cursor I want to shift, and I can move it up further, the next digit up. I can start editing from whether tenths, hundredths, or to the end of whatever number would, let's say, be there. I'll press mode, trim again, I'm back there. Move the cursor down. I can move over here, get the end I want to have, get the exact end I want. I'll press shift and the end cursor and move it up. See? I can even go, well, that's too far. Press shift, press that cursor again, and I'm moving even further increments. And I can get right to where I want to have it at. Hit play on the pad, just the play. Final loop, see that? I may want to get some more off the edge. Not too much, so now go back. I'll press the shift and press the other arrow in the other direction, and I can go down shorter numbers. Or press it again, and I have a small amount I can see. You can also press loop. If you want to loop it, we get the right beginning and the end, and we can loop our sample. Get the beginning right. Now I'll turn loop on. See this? So I'm going to cut some more off the end. Cut more off the end. Or I'll press shift. Turn this up. A little bit more. A little more. And you can loop that beat. I can press edit here. And now an edit function, I can even normalize that beat. Now here's the top of the edit functions we have where we can just discard the beginning and the end we don't want, the two pieces, and get the part we exactly want. Or we can extract this and make a new sample. Just to extract that section, do it. Whoa, insufficient memory. Make sure you must have the proper amount of memory to do this with. It has to extract that entire sample. If it's too big, you don't have enough memory, it won't do it. That's important. I can normalize it. Press normalize it. It processes it. And it's even a bigger sound. See the waveform's bigger? It even sounds louder. Now here we also have our play loop on top of this pad right here, 13. We got play 2 for pad 14. And we've got uh, play from for pad 15. And play all for 16. Now, I don't play my loop. See this top? That's the 2. That's the from, not much the end of from, and play all the entire loop. All the entire sample, actually. Ah, uh, my cue ain't funky. Oh, the Chinese gong. Aha, uh so. -huh. Oh, don't worry, I'm Hey, what's up, guys? It's time to check it out. It's programming. Hey, you can program your sounds, change the pitch, like almost like an MPC 60 or 2000, but it's different. Check it out. Uh, and you may want to use some sounds already with our MPC-1000. You want to put them in a program. Now, we'll press mode, and then I'm going to press pad number 7, which is for program. Of course, the mode light goes out, 
and I can pick the program for example F1 I can pick the program I want to check out I may want to check out this I hit a pad as you can see each pad has a sample on it and we see the level the tuning the range right there we can have that particular sample we can even add another sample there see that or take it out I go there and say okay I want to add something else and add something else see that you can add not just one but four different sounds samples can actually be triggered by that one sound at that pad as you can see the pitches have been changed see the same sample but a different pitch so you can take one sample and tune it several different ways to get the right drum sound you can see we have tuning also on our crash we have filter we can actually filter that particular sound. Here we've got a low pass. So EQ, freak is at 95. We got our resonance. This is really funky. Let's pick up. Let's go back down to here. See, it sounds almost like more metally or drown it out somewhat. We change the frequency, darken it out and change the actual sound a little bit. <laughs> Even change the actual effect on a sample. That's kind of funky. Make it resonate more. Hear that? Turn it, make that resonate even more. That's really funky. You can do several filter changes not just one, as you can see we can do two. Low pass, high pass, frequency, the resonance. I can even link them, see that? Super cool. Link this one. We don't set up parameters. Here, it can be poly, see so it play over and over? I can also set the mono. Hit from the top, see that? Or poly where it plays over and over again on top of itself. Part of the mute group there, see that? 1 to 32. We can also set the note for that pad. Hit the pad. That pad is B1, note 47. So many wise you might want to trigger a keyboard or something. If you want to know what key triggers this sound, you know, pressing note, we're in program, we can see that. Back to main screen. Yeah, Dave, you know what I'm saying before, man? Come on in, we're going to do this thing. Dave's here right now. We're going to get busy. We're going to take some keyboards and play a little music and put them right here into our MPC. It's going to be live, so get ready. Yo, Dave, bring me that more tea. Let's get busy, G. I'll press play start. We're on top of this room now. Groove. All right, this is my man Dave right over here. Do this game. Uh, sound games. Sound by Lord. Yeah, Dave. Okay, now record that. Let's record that in here. I'm going to press. Right here, and as we can see right here, my 
tempo, there is 109. Let's slow it down a little bit more. I want to get it down to about 107.0 on your dial. Got that? It's my big clunky hands right there. That's how you turn those, that number. See that? Turn the number right there. That's what I want to get. I move the cursor. Press the cursor button down now. I'm going to press it down one. Now watch what we are. We're here at... Look at that. We're on a track. We're going to improve the track. We're going to track number three by turning the dial. Next, I'll go down to drum and I'll make it a MIDI track. That's funky. Now here, I'm going to go over and I'm going to turn off this program. That actually activates whatever program is in your MPC. Let me turn this down some. There you go. Now, I'm gonna move over here one more time. This is our MIDI channel. I press the cursor button, we're over there. And now, we got our MIDI channel there. I'm gonna one, two. The piano we just did is already on one. We're gonna record on MIDI channel 2A. Remember, we have two MIDI ports. Okay, here we go. I'll press stop. And now, we'll record the keyboard player. So now we got this beat going on. Uh, we've got a new MIDI channel going up here. We'll let Dave play a little keyboard part uh, right into our MPC. I'm going to press uh, record and play start. Two, three, go. Okay, that's in there now. Dave, stop playing. And we're right there on track number three. Now see, Dave's playing right there. It's not quantizing properly. So watch this. I'm gonna go here to where it says time correction. Timing correction off. I'll press F1, and we have the note value, which is set to eighth notes. I'll turn the dial wheel right here. And I wanna probably go to off. This way, when Dave plays, it will not correct the notes according to the value. That well, could be 16th triplets, 32nd notes, 8th note triplets, 8th notes. In this case, I'll set it to off. I'll press do it to close it. Now I'll press record and play start. Three, four. Dave made a little mistake right there. Here's what we can do. I'm going to go here and press undo. I just undid that part. I'll play it back. Let's play the old part, see? Now, we'll do it again. We'll press record, play start. We'll do it over again. played exactly what he played. It played it back. See, it recorded the MIDI data into here. It recorded how hard it hit the note, the velocity, the duration of each note, and it's recorded an MPC without timing correction. It's very important to check it out. Do right now, I probably want to just cut a little piece out. I'm going to go press, let's see, I'll press play start. See, I press play, then record. Now watch this, play back. Cut out the part I wanted to cut out. You can also overdub from the top. And it's recorded right here in my MPC. Stop. That's how you do it. Sequence edit. I'll press mode. Sequence edit. I'll hit that's pad number 13. And here we go. I can copy a sequence. See? This is pretty cool. Very simple to the point. First measure. That's the last measure. I can copy that whole thing. I can move my cursor over here. I've got my from 
two. I can pick a section I want to copy it to. See that? Ooh. I can also get the end. Add more to it. I can replace where I send it to. I can merge it. I can merge two channels together or two actual tracks together and the data from both tracks will be merged together as one. And we're going to start. We want to take the section we pick from a two and to the from two, get that one section from the from to the two right here and put it right, right over me at that bar, 16, or bar 57, the very end, the very end. I may want several copies. Wow. We also have bars here. We can copy the number of bars. Move the cursor down. We have one. The first bar. Whatever bar is next. Pick the sequence, of course. And press do it to copy. Let's do track move. This is track move. I can take this track here. Let's say I select that one. And now I want to move it to there. Press move, and now you see the kick is track one. Take rim, select that, move rim there, move it, and now rim is eight. We can press mode, and we'll press pad 14, we have a step edit. And here we can edit the actual, let's say, effect or program or even a pad. We can say, okay, play this, that's what's there, play this. See that? We'll go up to here. Play this here. See that? We've got these notes that are already there that we can play that want the same on that same path. See that? We have the decay. We have the volume. The tuning. Now you can actually use your time correction here for that particular value that note. In the length as you can see the time of our song which is from 1 to 57. You can press do it. We can change the value, see? Of that particular note. Let's close. We can also, what track is this from? That's track number one. Kick and rim. We have copy and paste. We can copy something and paste it. We have delete. Let's delete some sounds. I'm deleting stuff. It's, I'm deleting things, right? Look, I'm deleting all of it out of there. I can press insert. Pick the note I want to get. Insert it. Insert the event. See that? The pitch or whatever. I can also play any song I want to play. Let's go ahead and pick a sound. And I'm playing that sound right there. Here's the front of our MPC-1000. Now here we've got our new Q-Link section. This is really cool. This is similar to the one on the MPC-4000. This can be used to control pitch, DK, and even layer of sound. For example, I have to hold these down in order to hear the sound play out. So I control the decay. I'll press mode. Next, I'll hit pad one. Now we see the pad and our Q. We have Q1 is not grayed out or blackened out. So we have access to Q1, which is right here. I'll move the cursor down to tone, tune rather. And here, I can now control the tuning through Q-Link 1. If the right pitch you want, you may have another sample, let's say, here, you know, that's going to be too high. Get your right pitch. You can also have, not just tuning, we can have filter, we can have layer, attack, 
It's gonna attack? Well, that's cool. So it change attack? It's the attack. Decay. We can increase the decay. Or shorten it. See the decay? We cut back on the decay. See that? Or back up with the decay. Now, I'm going to take the Q-Link section and make a beat. I'll press play and press, excuse me, record, record and play. Go back to main screen, as you can see, I have a sequence and my tempo is 90. I'll make a beat up now. I'll change the pitch of that sample, but it's using my cue, I'll go after touch. See, it's changing that one. So I'm changing the actual sound. It's tied to the cue link. Even after I've stopped using record and play. So we'll maintain that one pitch, let's say. Now watch this. I'll release the after. went back to another pitch to where it's at now. So I can go back to here or lower it down. Now we have a new pitch for the same sample. We can do the same with Q-Link 2. The right parameters. Whatever Q-Link is actually tied to, if Q-Link 2 for example here, we go to mode, we press our slider here, we go to Q-Link 2, it's set for decay. I can turn this down, lower the decay, play the track, see? And now we're controlling the decay here, and the tuning here. Okay, I can also use the cursor to move back and forth here in my main screen. I can just hit window, watch this, I'll hit window. This button's already lit here, this is the window button. I'll press it and we can look at our display and we have the window for loop. First bar, last bar, okay. I can close that window right there. I can move the cursor over here to where it says sequence. I'll press the button, window, which is illuminated. It's yellow, there we go, sequence. I can pick a sequence, I can delete user close or copy that sequence I'll just close I can move it down to here try it on tempo doc alright let's try tempo let's go to window check that out we can do tempo change you know initial tempo look at that it's really cool we can edit the tempo and fix it as you can see if you move the cursor over any parameter here it shows you exactly what you can do there I'll press button. See the button's not, see this, look at this. It's not lit. So there's no window there. Check that out. There's no window. See it mute? There's no window. It's either mute on or off. But watch. I'll move the cursor over here and the window button lights up at bars. I'll press window and we can change the bars. So what I'm saying here is that I'll press close. If you go to a parameter that requires no window, the window button will not light. Okay, now I'm going to press window. I'm in track. As you can see there, the cursor's there on the track number three. I'll press window. This is the track section. I can now name that track. See, I just turned this little data dial a little bit, and it flipped that screen to this option, which is name. We can copy. We can paste something in. We can cancel. We can even enter something in right here. Next thing that we'll do 
is we can move the cursor and name it. Or we can hit a pad. Hit a pad here. I can call it B. Move the cursor over again. Then I call it A. Move my cursor again if I want to. But in this case, what I want S. So you went through automatically. Go here again. Press S. This is my bass track. Now from this point, I might want space. I'll go back to here. And I'll press Shift. You can add a space there. See that? Clear it out. I'll press Enter. And I'll say Close. And it's called a bass track. That's how you do it. Name that track. Okay, let's check out the MIDI section. We'll press mode and I'll press, excuse me, I'll press pad number nine. Okay, here we have our MIDI section. Now here we have active track receive channel. And I want to have all my active MIDI channels receive MIDI information. Or you can select just say one. I only want to receive MIDI information for channel one or channel 16 or all. We can also set our soft through function. Now here, this means that if someone's playing a keyboard part, I have that keyboard player plugged into MIDI channel one or two in, and it's set to off, that information will not go back out through my out. Or here, I can set it to as track. That means one track, for example, I can go to main screen and turn this one track into a MIDI track. Go to here and set my MIDI channel. See that? I can go back to mode, press MIDI sync again. And now, whatever track has a particular MIDI channel and it's set to MIDI, it'll make sure that that output that comes in, if it's supposed to be on track number 10 or 8, 9 or 1, 1 through 16, then it will trigger that information will be sent back out. This is really good when using a module, for example. You may have someone play keyboards in. Then, you may want to have that output go to a module, which is a separate rack keyboard. We can also set an Omni out all of A, all of B, or AB. This is important here on sync. Now, when syncing up, sometimes you want to sync your MPC to another external device. Sometimes I use it to, to actually uh, run my Pro Tool system. So. I can set the sync one or two. Now the MPC 1000 only does MIDI clock. We can have it go out of both A and B, B or A. Next we have note. We can select the pad and change the MIDI note we want to actually. And see it change with asterisk right there? That's telling us. We've changed that note. Okay, now, let's see. I want to try and use some effects. This is pretty cool. I'll press mode, then I'll press effects, this pad right here. I have effects, so I can select my effects. Now here, for example, I'll select FX1. I'll make this, let's say, this could be something like a tremolo or something. There we go. I'll press select. And I have a tremolo there. I'll go to effect two. I want a reverb, just what I want. That's perfect. Now, I'll press mode, mixer. I can press effect send, FX send. I can send that particular sound. As you can see right there, we're selected here for this black in that area. And watch, I'm bringing the sound here. It's going into that effect. That's really cool. It's going right into that effect. What are you I, using to change the level, Doc? I'm using the data wheel here. Watch this. Now, I'll move the, press the cursor and move it up. I can go either to that or to one. I'll move the cursor down. I'll send it. See? For this particular sound, even turn the data wheel, it won't move. Because some effects don't require a data wheel to move in order to send the effect or the sound that we have here into that effect. I'm playing it now. 
a little different. I'll go back to here. Off. It can be off. Or two. Now check this out. I'll press mode. I'll press effects. And here we also have effects on the master out. This is so freaking cool. You've got an EQ. Caleb, this EQ is, isn't that great? It's dope. This is hot, man. Look at this. We got four bands. We can get the cues in there. We can get any frequency you want to select. Select that frequency. Move it down to here. Oh, I want this frequency right here, Doc. Okay, buddy. We're going to get rid of that sound for you. Bam. We can de Oh, or we can boost it up. Any frequency you want. We've got control of the cue. This is a really great EQ. Really cool. Plus a compressor. There is a compressor on the output of our MPC-1000. We have a threshold, attack, gain, decay, the ratio. This is super cool. Okay, I can press mode, song form, and here in song form, I can pick whatever sequence I want to use. To the end of my song. And each sequence can have its own tempo. As you can see right here. We have bars. How long each sequence is. We can, cons we can convert this into one long sequence and convert it into that one sequence. Press do it. We can also delete. We can insert. Added two of those. One and two. Oh yeah, getting busy once again. It's time. You want to load it. You want to say, hey, I got my flash card. Let's load it in. Okay, Doc. Load those sounds. You me got them. Let's load. Let's say. Let's delete. Let's do it. Hey. Now, I'll press load. Mode. Pad 2 for load. I can go to my memory, my memory card, or internal memory. We can auto load the file. All files, samples, MIDI, sequence, all songs and sequences, the project, the entire file. Folders. We also have our wave and our sequence. How much free memory do we have? We can go to save also. We can save to our memory card. Pick a sample. We can save a program. All programs and sample. Save a sequence. Save all sequences and songs. Save entire memory. Here's our size. How much free do we have? We have our utility, memory card. You can select a device. Right now, all we have is a memory card set up. USB. We connect our MPC-1000 to your PC, or your Mac, of course, with a USB cable. Check this out. This is hot. Take your computer, take the sample sounding out of the computer, take it, put it into the MPC, and use it. Watch this. Get your USB cable ready. It's time to do that transfer from your computer. Transfer from your computer. Check it out. Now, once we're connected, you'll see the status say connected once your USB cable is in. And of course, please do not remove the USB connection until the drive icon is removed from your PC or Mac. Okay, now I'm going to take my USB cable that I have right here and I'll plug it into my keyboard. Next, we're going to see the MPC come up on our screen. Okay, we can see there's untitled. That means that that storage device is not titled. Well, now I can grab the sound I want to get. I'll take this one right here. And this one. See, it already exists. I've already got it in there. It even knows what's on that 
device. This is my flashcard. Now I'm going to open it up. Next, we can see it's untitled. We have 19.9 megabytes available, three items. The auto load folder, which contains the files that automatically load into our MPC. I'll close this. And we also have the two WAV files I put on the flashcard. I'll close that window. Then I'll grab my flashcard and throw it in the garbage on my Mac. And now I'm ready to disconnect the USB connection and use the sample on my MPC 1000. Now, I'll go to load and I'll see it here on my memory card. Now that we see the sound of the machine gun fire, we can take it and load it. Okay, it's a great machine. We showed you a lot. Get our next level tape. I'm going to start making beats, quantizing, hit patterns, things to really do. Also, it's important. Get the latest software whenever. Visit SoundKings.com. We'll tell you when it's going to come up. And you know you need some fat samples. Who to come to? The Sample Kings, baby. Remember, nobody does it better. <laughs> I'll see you on a few.